Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. You know who I am, Ingram Jones here. And just thought I'd pop on. I haven't been around for a while. I've uh, been taking a little bit of a rest. but um, And it's my wedding anniversary today, so five years married. So we're at this fantastic location at the moment. Uh, but anyway, enough of that. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is it. Tony Belly versus Makabu says this is Sunday morning, uh, Sunday afternoon. I don't know. I'm kind of disorientated because I'm not on that side of the world at the moment. But uh, my thoughts, I thought I'd give you my thoughts on the fight tonight or tomorrow, whenever it is. Um, first of all, I am a fan of Tony Bellew. The only thing about Tony Bellew that kind of befuddles me is that he seems to have charisma and personality when he gets in the ring. There always seems to be that little bit missing. I do like Tony Bellew. I think Tony Bellew is a, a good fighter. I think he's a all round. I think he's a very a very good fighter, actually. I think he's got a good jab. I think he's got a good right hand. Well, he kind of sloppy with the right hand sometimes, but he's fundamentally correct as a boxer. Can move in, can move out, can fight back it up, can go, go forward, can move to the sides. Uh, light heavyweight, I thought he was a decent, like, good light heavyweight. And he came against uh, Donny Stevenson. Well, he fought cleverly first in his first world title shot. I backed Delhi to beat cleverly in his first world title shot. Uh, cleverly nicked it on the cards. And, of course, Belly himself, uh, the light heavyweight at the time, had stamina issues and he actually slowed down during, you know, the, the, the latter stages of his fight. His second fight... His second world title fight, as he was rebuilding, it was against Adonis Stevenson. Anybody who knows about Adonis Stevenson know he could crack um, with that left hand. And Tony was doing okay until he got cracked by Adonis Stevenson. And after he got cracked by Adonis Stevenson, you know what was happening there. And now he's moved up to cruiserweight. Um, had an interesting um, opening fight uh, as a cruiserweight Um had to get off the canvas, I think, on his debut as a cruiserweight. So that was interesting. But, was, you know, he came back and he fought against a gatekeeper in the cruiserweight division. So that was good for Bellew. After that, um, the rematch with uh, Nathan Cleverly, who really was never a cruiserweight. That that light heavyweight, that he was a light heavyweight moving up to cruiserweight. And uh, Bellew wasn't able to knock him out. Bearing in mind after what, um, what's his name again? The guy, like heavy, light heavyweight champion, how can I fix Kovalev, Sergey Kovalev, Sergey Kovalev. The fact that Kovalev was able to wipe out cleverly, you know, that's what you call a real puncher. So now we've got, you know, he beats, he fights Masternik for the European title, gets past Masternik, and now he's got this world title shot against a guy, Makubu. Let's get a few things straight here. Makubu can punch like most cruiserweights, uh, and again, it's a southpaw. So um, Bellew has to go back to the spot where he was at as a light heavyweight, now as a cruiserweight. Um, he is taller. He seems significantly bigger than Makubu, um, which is interesting. Um, but Makubu can crack. For all the size that Bellew's got, I always get the feeling with Tony Bellew, he's always short, shy of, 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 that, of that thing that make you into a world champion. I think you can be world class, but not be world championship material. So tonight or tomorrow, whenever Tony Belly fights, he's got to determine whether he is actually world class, meaning you fight among the elite fighters and hold your well and you give people a good fight, or you actually are going to become a convert into becoming a world champion. That's the question that Tony Belly has to answer, whether it's tonight or tomorrow or Sunday. I don't know. But yeah, that's what Tony Belly has to answer. He, he's got it. He's got to answer to the, the boxing world, whether he is a gatekeeper, whether he is a European level, whether he's elite level, uh, kind of like a guy that's around the mix, but never actually wins a world title, or he actually is a world champion. That's what Tony Belly has got to show to the boxing world tonight for me. Um, the big question mark about Tony Bellew, the two things about Tony Bellew, which, which concern me. People say, oh, but uh, Bellew doesn't look in great shape, but Bellew's never going to be uh, Mr. Fantastic in terms of body, so forget that. And bodies, body, body, look, the way a body looks 
doesn't mean a person's going to be a world-class fighter or not. We've had this debate many times on this channel, i.e. Um, Larry Holmes wasn't body beautiful, but he could do the business. George Foreman wasn't body beautiful, but he did the business. So um, what he has got is a big heart, Tony Belly. My concerns, again, about Tony Belly are twofold. First thing is power. Is Tony Bellew a world-class puncher? Now, he keeps talking about his power, but I think he's got a 56% ratio of knockouts. And then again, you could ask yourself the question, how many world-class, elite cruiserweights has Bellew knocked out? Now, he couldn't knock out Nathan Cleverly, a pumped-up light heavyweight. Now, maybe it's because he couldn't nail him cleanly because he had speed. Now, with Maccabi, you've got someone who's got a bit of speed there. He's got power. He can take you out of either hand. Or maybe that, that big left, he's got the left hand he's got, he'll take you out with. Um, and he's got movement. So it, it, Belly might find it difficult to catch him. And Belly may have um, the issues right there of frustration. When you get frustrated, that's where you get nailed. Belly also, uh, the one thing I do like about Belly's career, you can see that he's actually kind of built. You know, you can see how he's come. it's coming together. So let's hope that it all comes together for him on the night. Um, but Macabo seems a very spiritual man, seems like a man that 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 is not getting phased by the height or the size of Bellew, and he's going to go about his business. He's got the punch power. He's got the power to put Bellew on his back, and Bellew has already been dropped in his career at light heavyweight and at cruiserweight. So uh, there are times he's looked in the fights, he's looked tremendously sluggish, disinterested. Um, He's got heart. He'll come and fight. Don't get me wrong. Tony Bay will come and fight. And I hope he can get it together. Now, a man the size of Tony Bellew, okay, with long arms, long, and, and a guy as short as Makabu. Now, Makabu looks like, he looks like a light heavyweight. And Bellew actually looks like the cruiserweight here. Now, Bellew, for me, he's just got to keep Makabu on the jab and just don't allow Makabu to set. Just use the jab. He's tall, he's long arms. What's the point of being taller than the guy and longer, longer range than the guy if you're not going to use your jab and use your boxing ability? He's got a good jab, Tony Bellew. He's got good fundamental boxing, a good fundamental boxing brain. There's no reason why he cannot win this fight based on the experience he's had, having fought Adonis Stevenson, another southpaw, a tricky southpaw who punches very hard. He's got the ability to win the fight. It's not um, unthinkable that, that Bellew can't win this fight. He can win this fight. Whether he will or not, there are a lot of there are determining factors. Determining factors: Has he fought enough top quality opposition? What's his chin like when he gets nailed by Makabu? Because he could be winning a fight, and Makabu lands, and Makabu can punch. That that's my concern about Belly. When Makabu lands, how Belly responds? This guy, I think, is a top class puncher. And uh, if I'm right, Makabu is the guy that knocked out the guy that Eddie Chambers got beat by. Uh, I don't know if that's any fun guy to go by now based on Eddie Chambers' recent performance at heavyweight. But you know I mean? when Be um, Chambers came down to light heavyweight, uh, I remember interviewing the guy as well. I can't remember his name again, but anyway. Um, so for, for me, Belly's got to use the jab. He's got a box. He's got a box, box, box. My other concern about Belly is that right hander is when he throws that right hand, it's sloppy, very sloppy right hand. And in all the years I've seen Tony Belly box, he's never addressed that problem with his right hand. He throws it and you can see it coming. You can have a cup of tea. You know, you could probably go down to the bakery, go down to Greg's, and come back, and then the belly, then the belly right hand lands. So his right hand is very um, – uh, he throws it, and you can just see it coming a long way. And something like Makabu is in and out and has got good movement, and he, he uses his body to be his defence. Very, very shifty kind of guy. Um, but one thing I do like about Tony Belly as well, I think he's he's maturing as a fighter. He's maturing. And um, a lot of people don't like Belly because he speaks out. But he's only a character. He's a character. It's people like Belly that make the game what it is today. You know, just speaking out and having your opinion. So people don't like it, but he's, the guy speaks a lot of sense and he backs himself. So I like Belly. He's been on the channel. He's been on Baylor TV before. Really nice guy, down-to-earth guy. Um, speaks truth. A lot of people don't like it because of rivalry between Everton and Liverpool and all the rest of it. But on a whole, he's a good guy. I like Bellew. Um, and I wish him all the best in his fight tonight. But he's going against a guy that could take his lights out of one shot. So, yes. So, uh, I think 
Let's see if I've got anyone in the room. I don't want to be rude. Yes. Right. Um, hi, Ingram. When are you going to put up the Harold Knight interview? I would love to put the interview up for you, but unfortunately, the uh, that's Mr. Metz, 85. Unfortunately, Mr. Metz, um, I've got an almost two-hour interview of Harold Shadow Knight, and it's got no sound. So I take it that the gods of the media world just didn't want me to put that out. So that's why it's now. Good evening, Michael Redman. How are you doing? Or for me, it's good afternoon, one o'clock here. Uh, Macabre is going to fold Toby, Tony in half, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, Jay Morrell says, Bellew is probably the most boring fight I've ever watched. I understand. I feel you. I really do. Bellew is very exciting outside the room. Then um, he's outside the boxing ring. He's very, not, he's very exciting. But when he gets in the ring, it always seems there's something missing with Tony Bellew. So I totally agree with that. It can be very boring. Um, yeah. Um, J124 says, if Belly uses a jab and doesn't allow Macabre to fight on the inside, I think he win the fight in points. I agree with you 100%. There is no reason why Tony Belly cannot win this fight on points. No reason whatsoever. Uh, try to put it this way. If it goes to points, there's no way Macabre is winning the fight on points. Macabre will have to knock Tony Belly out. It all looks to me, I don't like to use the word set up, but it all looks to me, Everton ground, Macabre hasn't fought in a year. WBC title, matchroom, kind of sort of seen it all before sort of thing. And I would be surprised if he did become WBC Cruiserweight champion. You know, I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me. Let's put it this way, people. It wouldn't surprise me. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, let's put it this way. If I'm going to make a prediction for this fight, I'll go belly points, Macabre knockout. I don't see Macabre winning the fight on points. Macabre knocks Bellew out if he's going to go if he's going to go with knockout. I'm not convincing Bellew's knockout power because he talks a lot about his knockout power, but his punch power itself, uh, I'm not sure. Sure, fifty six percent. I don't know. Uh, Afternoon, mate. Good, thanks. How tricks? Where are you at? Ah, uh, I can't reveal that because if I reveal that, it reveals a lot of things. But um, it's just not on that side of the water. As much as I can say, I'm celebrating my uh, fifth anniversary, wedding anniversary. And, um, you know, great, great news. I heard, I've just got news from the UK as well that I've uh, now become a board member of National Union of Journalists. I'm a board member there now on, on, a, on a particular group there. So I'm really happy to be, you know, a part of that membership. Um, they've acknowledged the work I've done and to be uh, a part of that membership is great. So I've not been here for a while. So let's move on, talk about a few other things while I'm here. Um, obviously, I didn't do anything on the David Hay thing. Um, David Hay's fight against the Cobra, it was disgusting, a disgraceful event. Um, but then we knew that beforehand. So uh, David Hay versus Shannon Briggs. I hope, you know, you know, I actually want Shannon Briggs to win the fight. I really do. I, I hope Shannon Briggs claps David Hay. If he don't knock him out, at least he hurts him. Because, um, you know, uh, it's a shame for what... Uh, Hayes done in the last two fights. Absolutely shameful. Disgusting. Um, you know, paying public are watching um, Hay uh, fight. Um, this guy, I don't nobody know where this guy came from. I thought he got pulled from the yellow pages. At least Shannon Briggs is going to be a good fight. Um, uh, that will be interesting to see. I look forward to that fight as well. Derek Chisora, I've just been watch, trying to catch up on stuff. Derek Chisora with uh, Dylan White is quite interesting as well. I think that'll be quite fun uh, to see that fight whenever it happens. Hold on. I think my wife's coming through the door. Hold on. Just wait a second. Hold on. Very quickly. Hello, hello, hello. I see you get you here quickly. There we go. Hi there. Happy Saturday, people. It's our anniversary. Five years today, and I'm loving every moment of this wonderful, amazing man in my life. <laughs> right. Thank you. You're welcome. See you in a minute. Okay. Cool. So, uh, there you go, people. You've got a bit of an exclusive there. So, yeah, uh, just getting ready to shoot out for the day. But, um, 
so yeah, David Hay, I want to see him. Uh, I want to see it's disgusting what he's doing. He's basically taking a casual, he's basically got a, a new market, which is the casual market. And he's basically, those people don't know much about boxing, but want to come out for a good night. That's what it is. So um, I think that's what that's what the whole hay thing is with. That's where he's going. But the Shannon Briggs fight is a real fight, I think. Um, Chisora and Gillian White, that's funny. Uh, David, Dave, uh, Allen getting in the mix now, talking about him fighting Gillian White. So I know David wants, Dave wants to get himself some good fights, wants to get himself in the mix. Whether that's a good move at this point in time, I don't know whether Dave is going to, Dave Allen's going to want to go down. Go, I know if he wants to fight and he'll fight anybody, but... I don't know if I would have him fight Dylan White just yet. Not because Dylan White knocked out or got knocked out by Anthony Joshua or anything like that. I just think that I'd like to see him in some more fights. Um, first of all, I'd like to see him get over that that Jason Gavin fight. In a personal opinion, I'd like to see him fight somebody else um, and get over that. Whether it be a, a Sam Sexton, a, 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 a McDermott, I don't know. Just somebody, a Matt Skelton, whatever. Just somebody else to fight and look impressive against. Before he fights Dillian White, if that fight's going to happen, I'd like to see that for uh, for Dave Allen. Um, so those are my thoughts on that as well. Um, did an interview with a gentleman yesterday by the name of Stephen Mancano. He Stephen Mancano is the uh, executive producer for the TV series Knockout. Need to check it out. Um, need to check that out. Um, that's it's the third series. If anybody's, if, if you don't know what the Monoka is, check it out on YouTube. That's where you had um, Mayweather, uh, Mayweather Senior, uh, Guerrero, and Judah. They're all together. Uh, they were all together. That three, like established or elite trainers, and they had to just train fighters up. So that's it. And they've had in that in that show, you've had. All the top fighters in there, from Sean Porter to Roy Jones Jr. to uh, there's just loads and loads of names. Zab Judah. So I did an interview with him, talked about the third series, he talked about the politics of boxing, talked about the promotion in boxing. Yes, with RJJ and 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 Roy J uh, and Floyd Senior. So he gave us exclusive information about the third series. He even invited me over to New York to be part of the show and uh, get a 30 second slot in there. So um, that was quite a nice touch there by uh, the executive producer of Knockout. So, yeah. Uh, Fikiru says, David Price is £275. That's £20 of what looks like fat on him. He's going to be moving like classic speed. Classic. I think uh, David Price is a dangerous heavyweight. I still think he's dangerous. So um, that right hand. He's got world-class punching power, I think, but he's got, like, trash can mentality. He needs to get it sorted. Yeah, so glad to see, uh, Mike Redman, that uh, you have, you've seen um, the first and second series. There's a third season coming out shortly. It's a good show, uh, knockout, pretty good. And the third season, they're saying, is going to be off the charts. So um you check out the interview i've got it on the channel to check it out um so hopefully fingers crossed i might be able to bring you some good stuff um i will be releasing a video sh soon shortly of my uh travels and um it was very eye very eye-catching stuff and very um emotional stuff but if you're and if you're a boxing fan, you're gonna love what I'm trying to line up for you. So if you're a boxing fan, you might like that. So uh, I don't know much more to say really. Um, I don't know there's much more for me to say. Um, it's been a nice break, honestly. I've enjoyed. I'm enjoying the break. It's good. Um, there's not much more I can really say to you unless there's something else I need to talk about. It's something I've missed out on. Golovkin. Um, now who's that? Who's going to be fighting? Yes. One last thing I've got to talk about. Got to talk about Deontay Wilder versus uh, Chris Ariola. I think that fight's going to happen next. As the mandatory, the next, because Deontay's going to fight is mandatory. I believe Ariola's next. 
So, are you going to get any fury build up before the fight? Um, that's logistics. That really is logistics. I think uh, we're going to have to see on that one. I'm going to see what I can do. Um, I do need to go to Camp Fury at some point, but it's logistics. It's just very difficult at the moment. Uh, but we're going to try and see what we can do. Oh, don't don't want to be harsh to Tony. He's a nice guy, but every time I've watched him in the last five years, it's been so disappointing. I agree with you. I, I totally agree 100% with you. Every time Bellew's fought, it, it's kind of boring. I think, uh, actually, I think the best fight I saw him in that really excited me was the first Cleverly fight. I think the build-up was good. Oh, man, I've heard Tarvis in the mix for Fyder. Well, I knew that that, that swerve was going to happen with Povetkin because I heard it a long time ago. I remember hearing it before the fight was actually nailed. I heard that people said that the whole drug thing was going to come up and the fight wouldn't happen. Now the fight hasn't happened. I'm like, oh, man. But I heard that was going to happen. And it's happened. So I don't know if it was a swerve. I don't know if Tar that, that, uh, Wilder knew that the fight was never going to go ahead. I don't know. Tony hasn't progressed past Euro level. Well, you can't really progress past Euro level if you're not fighting more. If you're only fighting Euro level fighters, then you're not going to progress. If you keep fighting guys at European level all the time, you're not going to progress. And then when you get to world level, it's such a big jump. So you need to, I think, the pro progression, you have to have steady progression. Um, I'd like to see Belly just move up a bit more in class and afford a bit more, but he's got a world title shot. It's... Yeah, so the whole Provetkin thing. Um, what's going on with the WBA situation with Lucas Brown? No, he got stripped. I know that um, Ortiz is fighting, he's not he's fighting uh, Houston off, but you know, I've, I, like. I've been, I've been, I've been kind of watching in and out of things of boxing for the last two weeks. But to be honest with you, I, like, I'm kind of like, I kind of feel like I've missed out on so much. So much can happen in one week of boxing. So I almost missed two weeks out of boxing. So I kind of feel slightly out of the mix. Come on, Ricky Burns tonight, most underrated British fighter. If he was Cockney like Mitchell, he'd be much bigger. But Hearn doesn't care about him. Oh yeah, Ricky Burns is fighting for a world title tonight. Shout out to Ricky Burns for that. Shout out to Ricky Burns. Um, I can see Ricky Burns if he if he wins the world title, it'd be nice to see Ricky Burns versus Adrian Broner. I always want to see that fight. Still want to see it today. I mean, he hasn't gone past that place. His performances have not improved. No, they haven't. But I, again, I said this about David Cole, Doug Colwell. I think he's an okay trainer. I just think Tony Bellew. I'd like to. See, I'd like to see that beautiful lady in the background, though. Yeah. Hello, Kirkland. I hope you're well. Uh, um. I'm closer to you than you think, so be careful, my friend. I'm only kidding. But um, um what was I gonna say? Uh I bet you bought the shit out of her with your boxing analysis hard. Done well for yourself though. Um not really, not really. Um she loves her boxing and we started doing a boxing show together, but if I wait for her to do a boxing show with me every week, you wouldn't get a boxing show. So, you know, she loves the boxing. Well, she likes the boxing. Burns three world champion. How many Brits can claim that? Duke McKenzie. Um, then you got me scratching my head. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so... It's kind of nice here, though. It's kind of nice and relaxing. And um, I had somebody said to me the other day that I'd be more appreciated if I left the UK, or Europe, and came to the States to do boxing coverage. Somebody said that to me the other day. I thought about it. I tell you, when you when you when you're loved and respected, and you're wanted, uh, you certainly do operate differently out of a position of. A place where people kind of like do everything they can to ignore you. Uh, three weight champion don't mean shit in this era. Well, if you can look at the Adrian Broner story, then I guess so. 
Um, yeah, especially the situation now with uh, Canelo and Gennady Golovkin. Why? So why isn't anyone else doing it? Good point. I do want to say something on, on a side note now. I saw an interview with Billy Joe Saunders, another fighter I've got a lot of respect for. A lot of respect for that man. British, Commonwealth, European, world. Done it. He's done it all. Right? And I tell you now, I say it myself, right? I wouldn't think twice about putting him in the room with Gennady Golovkin because I think he's a he's a he's an elite fighter. I think he's got speed, I think he's got movement, I think he's got a boxing brain. And I think uh, that makes a difficult fight for Gennady Golovkin because uh, he can punch as well. Uh, Bronis cherry pick Burns has always been the underdog. He has, he has indeed. He has. I, I like Ricky Burns. I remember when people were telling me how Ricky Burns, uh, when Mitchell was going to fight Ricky Burns, said Mitchell's going to get knocked out by Ricky Burns, and people laughed at me. Oh, they were laughing. They weren't laughing afterwards. So yeah, I like Ricky Burns. Got a lot of time for Ricky Burns. I don't like the way. The switch from um, Warren to Hearn. I don't like that. I don't like the way he's been handled. I'd like to. Ho I hope that Ricky's getting paid some good money tonight. I really do. I really do. And I hope at the end of all this that Ricky can still look after his family. You know, I don't. I don't like the idea. Ricky Burns is still working in a sports shop and have been a full-time boxer. I really don't like that. I don't like that. Are you sure? It's the whole humble thing. But you know. He needs to be getting paid. He needs to be paid, getting paid good money. Goes across and fights Figueroa. How much was he paid for fighting Figueroa? So I, I don't know. And that whole Ricky Burns scenario and situation really upset me because I remember uh, Eddie Hearn saying on national television, oh, yeah, you know, he skipped, he left Warren. He's with us now. And don't worry, our, 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 our team's looking after Ricky and Ricky's fine. And then you hear that Ricky Burns afterwards was basically bankrupt that's not nice you know so i i didn't like that yeah ricky still got his jig, jig gigging jjb yeah i don't like that though i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it you know i like to see fighters get paid what they're worth and going back back to this golovkin thing i want to go back to it people say oh he's the most avoided fighter in the world listen when you're gonna fight the elite fighters in the world the elite fighters want to get paid Elite fighters want to get paid, and elite fighters deserve to get paid. Elite fighters deserve to get paid. And I believe, in my humble opinion, that um, I think one of the strategies of being coming one of the most avoided fighters in the world is that um, you don't pay what the other fighter's worth. So the easy way, there's three ways. I think there's three ways to not have a fight. Overprice yourself, underprice the, the other guy you're fighting against, or not pick up the phone. There are three ways to get out of a fight. Yes. Oh, right. I'm going to end this. Right. Come and say goodbye, at least. People see you screwing your face up in yeah, the background. I'm going to screw up my face. Right. Goodbye. See you. We got to go. Love you. Right. I'm going to end this because. Um, as I say, my ride is here. I've got to go. All the best for Tony Belly tonight. I hope it's an exciting fight. Exciting in the fact that he's not climbing off a canvas, but he's actually winning the fight. And I hope it's like a rocky story for him. And then he comes WBC, cruiserweight champion of the world. I hope he does. I hope he does. I've got to go. I'm out. Take care.